I'm often asked how to make presentations more effervescent, how they can have more fizz. So I've come here to show you how you can make your presentation pop. What if I told you that your presentations could look like these examples? They're all using images to enhance your PowerPoint design, both by looking good, but also contributing to the story and helping your audience understand your messages. We'll get more into the visual storytelling aspect of this later, so for now, just think about the quality of your images. All of these come from one of my favourite free stock photography sites, Unsplash, which gives you royalty-free images for commercial use, and they're all beautiful. But even beautiful images can't save a slide like this. So it's not just a case of dropping nice images on the slide. You need to understand how to lay them out well and use the crop, colour and artistic effects tools in PowerPoint to treat the images appropriately and help give your presentations a professional look. To see how we've created these kinds of slides, check out the step-by-step -step guides in the links below. Big and bold flood fill images are great, but inevitably you'll need to place other content onto your slides. This is where white space becomes crucial. White space isn't just about adding white space onto your slide. This one has plenty of it, but still looks terrible. It's about creating areas of contrast with clear focal points to draw your attention to the important parts and even create a flow and hierarchy across your slide. This example gives you that luxurious feeling of the full bleed image, but crops it so that the focal point, the watch, is off to one side, leaving plenty of white or negative space around the arm for your content. The two sections work nicely together and we've anchored the text in a content placeholder and given it some structure too, by actually reducing the size of the text to give it more room. Again, we've got a full tutorial on how to incorporate white space like this in the link below. Grids are pretty much designed 101 and to be honest, I'm surprised that we've got this far into presentation design without having brought it up. You'll likely be familiar with grids from the world of photography. It's called the rule of thirds, where content is divided across a 3 by 3 grid, giving balance to content in the image. Well, the same thing applies to presentation design. A grid helps to lay out your content in clear, easy to follow areas. For example, telling the start, middle and end of a story. Using a grid also helps you position content. Here, one third of the slide has been taken up with the supporting image, so we've created a grid within a grid to lay out the three pie charts, which helps to create a feeling of harmony and sophistication. And don't think your divisions have to be straight along the grid lines. This slide doesn't apply the rule exactly, but still works really well. What does all of that mean? Well, you can transform a slide like this into this. It's really quick and easy to do in PowerPoint. And you can see our tutorial on using grids in PowerPoint in the link below. Another key presentation design principle is colour. Setting the right colour palette is essential, as it gives everything a consistent feel and allows you to adhere to your brand. The best way to handle colours in PowerPoint is to set your template correctly and use a colour theme. And you can find out how to change your PowerPoint colour theme using the link below. It's really quick and easy to do, and once you've done it, it will save with the file or template so you don't need to worry about it again. You can use colour in interesting ways to convey meaning. For example, a heat map is a great way to show data ranges like metrics using a scale rather than just plain numbers. That's more helpful to your audience as it allows them to see immediately both the absolute and relative values rather than having to spend time deciphering it. Colour can also focus attention. In complex data sets, contrast colours can help highlight primary data sets compared to everything else data series. You can find more specific guidance on manipulating colours in PowerPoint in the tutorial video in the notes. With your grids, colours and white space considered, you can now get into the specifics of creating slides in PowerPoint. As much as everyone loves visual presentations, we know there are always going to be slides stuffed to the gills with boring text. But by applying the presentation design techniques already mentioned, you can fairly easily transform your text-heavy slide into something that's far easier on the eye. Everything is easier to follow with consistent fonts and the use of colour highlighting. Breaking out the text with decent paragraph spacing helps your audience pass the content more efficiently and the white space around the content created by the contrasting placeholder gives the slide greater impact. As you've probably come to expect by now, this is something you can do using only PowerPoint, and there's a link below to a tutorial on text formatting. 
Now, while it's not Photoshop, PowerPoint has some neat tools to manipulate images. What if I were to tell you the picture you see here has been constructed out of this? PowerPoint design tools for images are all found on the Format tab on the ribbon. The good ones include the Remove Background tool, which does what its name suggests, the Color section allows you to put a color wash over everything, but also, at the bottom of the menu, you can choose Set Transparent Color, which will remove a single color from any image, which is how I've cut out the phone image in this example. Artistic effect is generally terrible, except Blur, which is great for changing focus on an image. And the Transparency tool, newly available in Office 365, makes pictures transparent, all in PowerPoint. For a full tutorial on this, watch the short video linked to below. And finally, my favourite thing to do, which is to use these design techniques as part of visual storytelling, which can help dramatically improve your presentation. Think about how you can use an image to convey meaning, as well as provide aesthetic appeal. For instance, you could use a skyscraper being constructed to show elements that are taking you higher, with labels up the building showing the key metrics. Or use a common site from underground stations, the advertising boards on escalators, to show a data series increasing. But the image also gives the figures room to breathe. It doesn't need to be complicated. And this example has been constructed from an image, some text and an arrow, to show the 20% of businesses highlighted on the office image. And of course, there's a short video tutorial to show you exactly how to do it noted below. The main thing to remember about effective presentation design is that you probably don't have time to create a totally new concept each time. These ideas are all about helping you create both beautiful and effective presentations quickly with minimal effort. So give it a go and let us know how you get on by getting in touch.